would suggest that something is going on during a state of uh, temporary cessation of consciousness. And obviously, in order to get that, we've got to go up. We've got to go up a little bit from near-death cases, because if this survey is anywhere near correct, many, many, many people have been brought back from these states or claim to have had phenomena while somewhere in the vicinity of being near death. And how do we know? Uh, they could be lying. This could be common biology. Uh, they could have had an experience which is not grounded in anything. So what are some of these evidential cases? Um, and, and the rest of the ones I'll present to you today are going to be moving up this, this ladder. We'll even have a little bit of near-death humor before this is over, some humorous near-death cases. Now, I've been collecting these for 30 years, just at my 30th uh, anniversary collecting these, and I have almost 100 cases which are evidential in nature. Some of them are mildly evidential. The tennis shoe case is mildly evidential, but uh, some of them are much more interesting. Before I go up to the, the flat heart level, let me tell you about an interesting study that came out a few years ago. You've got one case on there. I think it's your, it may be your third case. But um, a case with, with uh, a blind patient. A, a uh, study was done a number of years ago, published in a peer-reviewed journal by a psychologist and a nurse. And they did, they did studies with several dozen uh, patients who were blind who had been blind from birth, uh, not somebody who lost their sight, you know, at age 30 or something like that, but they were blind from birth or, you know, from the time they were in the hospital. And they would ask these, these persons, what did you experience? And they would often say, well, they'd have a pretty typical near-death experience. They would say, I had this experience of moving down this tunnel and seeing this light and being at peace and seeing these people but they have not claimed to have seen anything before or after that time. And, of course, after this experience, they were still sightless. So uh, they, it's not like they were, you know, from that time on they could see or something. It was only for those that very short period of time. And some of them reported evidential cases. You have one in there of a, of a, uh, of a woman who claimed to have been with two friends in a near-death state. She had never seen those friends before, but uh, because she had been blind from birth congenitally, and uh, she gave physical descriptions of these two ladies. But it's interesting because some of them saw things like certain doctors coming down the hallway outside of the, the room. Near-death patients are often attracted to loved ones. They're often attracted to, to people they know. And they would say, well, I saw Dr. So-and-so, and what's Dr. So-and-so look like? You've never seen him. Well, he's this tall, and he looks like this, and here's what he had on that day. And they could report what was going on in the near-death state. Now, it's still near death, so we have to go a little higher in that to get some more evidence. Maybe I'll stop here and give you a little, a quick case of, of near-death humor. Um, as I said, people are, are often attracted to loved ones. And in, in one particular case, this woman was having surgery and her relatives were down the hall and uh, waiting in the, uh, in the uh, waiting room, the operational waiting room. And she reached a point in the operation that was pretty serious. And she reached this, she was in this near-death state, and she said she could, uh, she was first kind of above her body, and then she was kind of out of the room, and she kind of was able to look in on where her, her relatives were walking around. And she saw her brother, sorry, brother-in-law, standing up, and he was pacing across this room. And he said, if she's going to kick the bucket, I hope she hurry up and does it, because I've got an appointment in a little while. And when she came to, she repeated the words to him and uh, thanked him for his confidence <laughs> and his love. You always want to be careful when you, what you say around dying people. Okay. Well, okay. But by the way, that, that's an interesting comment around dying people. And all these definitions of death, nobody thinks of death as something that happens in five seconds. You know, like the old, the old westerns on television, you know, where the guy says, they hit the gold in the... <laughs> okay, you don't die like that. And 
death is a process with a, with a uh, cessation, a progressive cessation of senses. And uh, one of the last senses to go, they think, is uh, hearing. And uh, so presumably people could hear things in the room for perhaps five minutes. In fact, that gets us to our next definition. Uh, a lot of people have come back from heart attacks. I know of a man. In fact, just I was lecturing in, in Tennessee two weeks ago, and I met this guy's relatives. I've been giving this case for, for years, and here I met his relatives. There are a lot of people who have come for, back from near-death states, sometimes many times. This man was in, a, was in a cardiologist's office in Chattanooga, Tennessee. They put him up on the treadmill, I mean, the stress, you know, to have a stress test, and he had a heart attack right in the doctor's office. That's a pretty convenient place to have a heart attack because the doctor who was tending to him was one of the first CPR experts in the world. The guy was an agnostic. The medical doctor was an agnostic. And this patient passed out from a heart attack, and the doctor's reviving him. And when he came to, he said his, his hair was standing straight up, and he said, Doctor, doctor, I'm in hell. Save me. Well, the doctor's still working on him, and the guy has another heart attack. He had seven consecutive heart attacks, and the medical doctor brought him back. And one time he said to the guy, he said to the doctor, I'm in hell. I'm in hell. What should I do? And the medical doctor, like I said, he's an, athe he's an agnostic. And the guy said, I don't know. I'm not a pastor. Pray do something, and he's working on the guy. Well, the guy came to and they got him in the, in the hospital, and a couple days later, the doctor's got his pen, he's got his clipboard, he goes in to talk to the patient. He said, hey, I'm curious about something. Tell me about this hell thing. And this guy said, hell? He said, yeah, tell me about, about hell. And the guy said, I don't know anything about hell. And he said, well, every time we brought you to, the other day, you kept saying you were in hell. I mean, there were nurses standing around and everything else, and I'm not a religious man, but I wonder what you meant. And the guy said, I don't have, I'm not saying you're lying. I'm just saying I don't have any recollection of that whatsoever. So uh, my point there is that some pe uh, we have a lot of people in this country who have been uh, near death, and some of them, like this man, reports consecutive states. Now, there's another doctor, Michael Sabom, a cardiologist in Atlanta, who's been cataloging these things for 30 years. He also has cases where people have had consecutive heart attacks, and once or twice they will have memories, and the rest of the time they don't. They don't have, they just have, you know, they blacked out. As far as they're concerned, they have no memories.